Good afternoon for all of you guys. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, interoperability between biomedical systems. And for this, the presentation is based on a paper from Nature Medicine that the author Trevor Bedford gives 10 recommendations for supporting open pathogen genomic analysis in public health. And actually this paper talks about interoperability between public databases of genomic data, but these recommendations can be applied to other areas such as clinical, uh, uh, demographic, or epidemiological data. And, and Trevor Bedford is the PI and also one of the creators of the Nexus Train platform. That that platform aims to, for 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 those that don't know, uh, this this platform aims to to help epidemiological understanding and epidemiological genomic genome epidemiological understanding and provide a uh, updated view of public data with analytical and visualization tools. So uh, given that uh, we we do have access to whole genome sequencing uh, because someone published this on, on a public database and this can help uh, diagnosis, treatment and, and other disease prevention. But only a database is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, because on this way, even uh, being about the same issue, the data are useless, and and they are they, they can hide hide uh, isolate data sometimes incompatible platforms having missing data uh, a lot of enough info uh, not enough information, and this makes data difficult to process and interpret. And sometimes one of us go there and solve something uh, or have an insight about the problem to integrate data uh, the best as, it, as we can. Access to whole genome sequencing have helped to improve uh, the ability to detect outbreaks and, 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 tra and track diseases such as COVID-19 to in investigate uh, transmission and uh, dynamics uh, on the population, disease dynamics on the population. So. Uh, recently, Elde has published a paper using sequencing data of the SARS-CoV-2 in Brazil to investigate the origin of the virus and spread uh, in the community transmission of COVID-19 in various localities. But uh, although the, the laboratory uh, capacity to generate all of this data and any kind of data, uh, such uh, as transcriptomic, genomics, and, and epidemiological data, uh, the capacity to analyze and interpret data has been uh, harder to to develop, and this is this is what this is uh, what the paper is about. Uh, this integrative analysis of uh, different populations with different medical history uh, having the same uh, disease could help to understand why uh, uh, these these different populations. Uh, have more or less predisposition to different outcomes. Uh, which of these populations uh, have more predisposition? So th this is a, a kind of issue that can be that can be be, be solved, and, and that uh, is really interesting to 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 think about. So based on these issue, issues, they described a list of recommendations based on these four statements. So this is reproducibility, accessibility, and flexibility in auditability. Reproducibility uh, to standardize data across agencies and public health uh, databases. Accessibility to, to both economic resources and technical. Uh, and flexibility to provide a set of tools to uh, So th this, this recommend, all, all of these recommendations is based on this uh, four uh, statements, reproducibility, accessibility, flexibility, and auditability. Uh, reproducibility to standardize the information across agencies. Accessibility to, to provide uh, uh, technical knowledge and, and, and resources about the, the, this data. Flexibility to, to help the visualization and exploration of this data. Uh, uh, the, in, the, the best integrative way they, that they can. Auditability to ensure that all of this is, is, is standardized and uh, uh, according to, to strict public health standards. So uh, 
here they emphasized uh, the infrastructure of, of uh, about how public health information systems should look like to make data useful. So first, bioinformaticians must process raw reads and assemble, uh, assemble genomes uh, within data processing. Uh, 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 within this this part of the data, data processing is separated from the data visualization and analysis. And this this and this part is is consistent. Uh, uh, field, I think that that's the word. In this part, this field for three types of of databases. One one is for archiving or holding uh, whole sequencing reads. One is for uh, the assembled data, the assembly data uh, that came from uh, the assembly pipelines, and one is for ho for holding metadata about this, this the sample. And this is this is the data management, the standardization, and pre-processing data, which is uh, separated from the the data analysis and visualization. And this is splitting. Uh, uh can maintain the efficiency while allowing uh flexibility enable enabling many different analysis to be performed without the need to to rerun assembly pipelines again so this can use many platforms so such as uh, phylogenetic tools and data visualization to enable research to interpret data and take reports about any specific issue. So this can this can be run fast, uh, faster than the processing part. In this paper, they interviewed uh, a lot of public health agencies. And this is the full list of interviewees to generate the, the consensus uh, about the interoperability between systems, different systems of, of genomic databases. So they performed a series of long form interviews in many, pub in many public health agencies and to, to establish this. The first recommendation uh, we have to support data Asian and interoperability by developing and adopt a consistent data model. So uh, we already have genomic sequences databases such as sequencing read archive with, with uh, standard formats. But uh, we continue to face challenges such as missing data and inconsistencies. So they recommend to use hierarchical models to link all the related pieces of data that describe uh, hierarchical relationships. So in their model, they keep data linked by three major data fields. This is case, samples, and sequences. Linkage between the fields is maintained by the case identifier and sample identifier, and they require data uh, can be can be found by by this this identifier. They think that this model is sufficiently flexible to apply for uh, a wide range of pathogens. And and we if if we talk about the epidemiology part, uh, this can be flexible for a wide range of disease. There there are some companies and some uh, projects to to do this, uh, such as Gene Epio. And we can discuss that later. So two, uh, then a, a strength, a strengthening application programming interfaces uh, that can communicate uh, with the users and non-bioinformaticians in automated way. Uh, we already use web-based platforms to to query for genomic or transcriptome information. Uh, the quality of these APIs directly affect our ability to efficiently reproduce uh, to efficient, efficiently reproduce something. Also, this, this takes a lot of time to linking data and managing file formats, conversions and writing codes that could be that could be solved in, in a web based manner or, or in, in standardized platforms. So so another recommendation is to develop guidelines for management management this data. Uh, management uh, uh, the, the genomic data and these guidelines should consider the collection, annotation, archiving and reuse of data. So the community should develop these guidelines based on fair principles that they, they call the fair principle, uh, it, which is consistent, co consist, which consists in, in findable data, 
accessible, uh, interoperable, and reusable. The, and this principle can maintain the data analysis accurate and are able to review novel insights since we have more data to work on. So since we have these guidelines uh, developed, uh, we have more data to, to access. The interoperability between this, this data can review novel insights about the, about the many issues. Four is to facilitate the access to standardized by, uh, by informatics across uh, agencies. They uh, recommend to develop and maintain a platform of open source pipelines for bioinformatics assembly and genomic analysis. Uh, and within this uh, system, they recommend that bioinformaticians bio use uh, open source uh, deployment platforms to to publish their pipelines and the, the, the full pipelines uh, openly. And this this pipeline should output uh, non proprietary non proprietary file formats and bioinformaticians should build in, in in an environment that support user feedbacks and I should tracking such as uh, GitHub, for example, that we already use. Five, we know that the data interpretation is is essential to to review some key aspects of the of the of, of, of an issue. So data visualization uh, can be used for for data interpretation, such as uh, the creation of phylogenetic trees. Uh, as the next strain uh, do. So analytic and visualization pipelines that part of the pipelines for analytic and visualization should be prepared for from the, the assembly and the pre-processing pipelines. So this separation allows uh, uh, the, the genome assembly to occur on, on, on low security scientific computers. Uh, so uh, uh, we have we have this assembly part. Uh, I mean, we have the, this assembly part on the separated from epidemiological data. That, that, that's what I mean. We have to to assemble this these genomes separated from the epidemiological data. And this separation can uh, provide a, an added benefit that uh, a uh, bioinformatician uh, wishes to, to rerun a, an analysis, it do not interfere in, in both parts. Uh, after assembly, uh, bioinformaticians could join epidemiological data in, in secure servers within uh, the, the assembled genomes. Six, uh, they recommend to improve the reproducibility of bioinformatics analysis. Uh, this needs for stable uh, software and, and reproducibility analysis should drive how bioinformaticians pipelines are developed and maintained, hosted, and, and tested. So they recommend to use version control to manage the pipelines uh, and, and data sets uh, in a, to, to provide requirements and, uh, and, and out, out of to provide auditability of the pipelines using workflow management and in developing uh, validation and developing validation criteria so for, for access the, this bioinformatic for to access this bioinformatic pipelines the assembly uh, the, the the assembly pipelines they recommend to to publish this on on a budget control such as we know as the github Seven, uh, utilize cloud computing to improve the scalability and accessibility of bioinformatic analysis. They recommend this uh, to develop uh, bioinformatic ecosystems that, that they, they call ecosystems as cloud-based uh, system. And these data capture uh, analysis and storage uh, is all hosted centrally in, 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 a, in, in another place, in, in a in a cloud-based manner. So it can reduce the number of, of high-performance computing in uh, scalability of processes. N not every institution can purchase high-performance hardware, hardware 
and there's, there's no need to pay for highly remunerated workforces. So instead, is, is small agencies could pay only for their usage of the, the cloud-based systems. So another recommendation is to set the work team uh, with biologists, bioinformaticians, uh, genomic uh, epidemiologists, data scientists, and all and all of these workforce is training on on this on the issue of the other. So to support the, the analysis, a, a great amount of complex data in, in public health agencies could could be a, a challenge for many teams. The uh, additional bioinformaticians and genomic epidemiologists uh, trained on the issue of the other. Genomic epidemiologists need to know a little, uh, a bit, uh, a little bit about epidemiology, and epidemiologists need to know uh, a little bit about genomics and as well. So, just to to another another recommendation, which is the nine to improve the integration of genomic epidemiology with traditional epidemiology. So the traditional, uh, traditional epidemiologists need to know a little bit about genomic and, and they recommend that they should uh, teach uh, genomics to epidemiologists and teach epidemiology to bioinformaticians to create a more uh, com complete team uh, that includes both and, and other areas as well. And finally, uh, although harder to share, uh, personally identifiable data can be critical import, uh, critically important to understand the disease outbreak. And they recommend sharing this data along secure uh, and trusted uh, channels to well understanding and, and of disease, to, to well understanding of diseases uh, dynamics and, and guiding public health uh, uh, responses and in, in, in politics and policies. So this can be done by many ways, but the, the sharing across the agencies is, is essential and it could be performed by an accession control to different levels of information. So the PIs have access, uh, have full access to, to all the information on this database, for example, and the others have the access in a hierarchical manner. For example, so the, this this open data sharing uh, can be done, and it provides uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, available data to to work on. So, taken together, this recommendation uh, provides a starting point for this discussion of in uh, these in these efforts. Uh, can can be can be taken together to 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 improve public health by informatics, and this is not easy since uh, they are dealing with data privacy and and security information. But this can improve not only the availability of critical biomedical information, and and but but also uh, uh, além da da the da disponibilidade desses dados, né? É, it can it can uh, improve the interoperability and reproducibility of of these in, in healthy data. Using it. So this is it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> it's I think that uh, it was an interesting article. I mean, they, they put a lot of uh, bring up a lot of interesting points. But it all sums up in just like having better quality, right? It's it's like improving the quality, and these things go on uh, for a while. I mean, things like using controlled vocabularies and ontologies. They mentioned this uh, genomic epidemiology ontology. This is not new stuff. This this has been going on for a while. So, yes. How, how do you see like what are the gaps between these recommendations coming up to the real world? I mean, they are listing things that they think that they should be done, but do they, I haven't read the article, I have to be fair about it, but uh, uh, so what do you think that, that it's the gap between the things that they mentioned in the article and the real world implementation of those? I think I choose this article because I, I, I've i been working on on the Tukushi, the, mm -hmm. the Tukushi uh, things, and 
to to integrate all the epidemiological data that we have across agencies in, in Brazil, for example, we we need to to start or or, or think about the the be, what is the best way to to share all the the, the information. Mm -hmm. So I, I think many of these things uh, uh, have been have been do have been done. Many of these things have been done, but uh, we have uh, a high mountain to climb to climb uh, until we have uh, all, all agencies to, to publish it, the, the data, and, and this is automatically linked for, uh, for all of the, the agencies. So I think is the 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 primary part of this issue is the is to to guide to to, to establish guidelines to 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 publish data, but uh, we with with no exceptions because. We have uh, a lot of missing data, and and uh, I, I I don't know I, I don't know what's the, the the current the current issue that that we that we have. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, all in all the aspects of the of this problem. I don't know uh, all the point of views, but I think I think we have a high mountain to climb yet. I don't know yeah. if I... No, no, it's good. I mean, it's. I think that it's It's a... The paper itself, it tackles many, many different issues, right? So yes. since, like, using the cloud or using... Uh, sort, uh, like, having version control of pipelines, and these are all very complicated and, and diverse things, right? So, and... I, I was wondering these kind of papers, I mean... Uh, Okay, this is all very cool, but what do we do now? Like, I want to integrate databases in Brazil, and yeah, and how do I go about it? So, what would be the next step, right? I mean, we can think about if I was the the like Luis Eugenio Melo, the head of FAPESP, and I was very interested in doing this. What I would do? What of these topics, and how long would it take? I mean, this to to have a system that takes all these recommendations into account. This is a 10, 20 years uh, in, in the minimum to like yes, to really the, the, the travel capacity uh, people to do it. Sorry, the, the PI of this the PI of this this, this work uh, is one of the, the the creators of Dex's train. So they they publish this all of this genomic uh, data that that they have access in public health uh, agencies. So they all they already have been doing this with genomics, but uh, the the reason that I that I'm that I that I was wondering is uh, why can why can we why can we porque a gente não faz isso para dados epidemiológicos então tipo porque o grande problema aqui é sempre ele linkar os dados genômicos com os dados epidemiológicos. Então, é, se a gente tiver que fazer essas mesmas coisas para dados epidemiológicos primeiro e depois tentar linkar com os dados genômicos que, que a gente tem. Eu acho que isso, isso pode ser aquela, aquela parte que você falou do, do, do que a gente tem agora, assim, né? do que a gente precisa fazer. Talvez seja, primeiramente, resolver as duas partes separadas e depois tentar ficar linkando as coisas. Sim, sim, acho que essa é uma, uma ideia interessante, né? Você pegar tipo, primeiro a parte... Você atacar o problema de formas separadas. É, a, gente então... tem, a gente tem o PubMed, por exemplo, porque aí a gente tem o, 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 o SRA para procurar dados genômicos e tal, mas a gente não tem um, um dado assim, ah, será que tem um DO, DO pra, só para dados epidemiológicos ali, para a gente ver o que o cara tinha, obesidade, mais uns parâmetros clínicos ali, não, não tem uma coisa assim, é, não, eles não dão muita importância, assim, né? Então, para depois a gente fazer, tipo, uma multiômica, junto com dados epidemiológicos ali. Um... Mas, mas deve ter a base de dados de epidemiologia, né? Algumas, assim, imagino. 
tipo, é uma ideia legal, mas eu não sei quais, que... é que eu não sou da área, assim, mas deve existir, eu imagino, pelo menos em algum grau, ou pelo menos para os Estados Unidos, assim, ou não. É, eu não cheguei, eu não cheguei a... a, a o problema de, de ter esse, essas bases de dados são, são os dados privados dessas pessoas. Porque uma pessoa chega no hospital e tem uma doença notificada. Esses dados todos vão para uma base de dados, mas a gente não pode publicar, publicar isso porque é dado privado. É dado... É, não, é, não é privado, é dado sensível. Né? Então... É, fica esse é um das recomendações que um, é um dos problemas que eles apontam é sobre essa privacidade dos dados e aí eles falam sobre colocar em, em nuvem e tudo mais para poder tentar centralizar alguma coisa ali e, e, e as pessoas usarem especificamente os dados que elas querem para não ter que ficar divulgando um monte de, de informação de, de pacientes aí por aí então, tipo, se eu for pegar um dado epidemiológico lá, vai estar meu nome, Juan, Carlos e tal, e aí as minhas informações, CPF, RG, endereço, essas coisas. Pelo menos no Brasil, assim. Ah, isso sim. Mas não tem uma, uma plataforma em que eu integre todas as informações. Tem o, o ESUS, que eu posso baixar lá as informações, mas vem separado por ano e algumas separadas por doença. É, tem um que é de mortalidade, aí vem separado por, por ano, e só alguns tipos de mortalidade. Então, tipo, não, não tem uma, uma estrutura que eu pegue um, um caso, uh, um caso não, um, um problema, né, que seria, sei lá, uh, infecção por Covid-19. E aí depois tem o, os casos, uh, diferentes regiões, sei lá, de Covid-19, e aí tem as amostras de cada paciente, e aí embaixo tem as... Tem as tem as informações epidemiológicas e tudo, como eles fizeram, né? Como eles falaram, é, sugeriram de fazer uma, uma coisa hierárquica, assim. Juntar tudo num lugar só para poder ficar mais fácil. Acho que tem, tem muitas limitações ainda. Tô estudando todos os aspectos Não, aí. É, é interessante. É, é, eu fico pensando também o que, o que a gente pode fazer a gente, né? Tipo... Ah, porque, bem, bom, a gente tá num laboratório que faz muitas coisas diferentes. Sim. Muitas coisas diferentes. E yeah. é. E. Tipo, montar uma base, sei lá, montar uma base dessa. Isso não é um trabalho que a gente consegue fazer. Tipo, seria uma coisa que teria que ter, sei lá, uns 5, 6, 7, 8 PIs diferentes num instituto montando, assim, né? Sim. É... E eu fico pensando, tipo, quais as recomendações valem para. O que a gente pode pegar disso para gente, né? Do, do... Ou, ou, no caso, a gente, quem do laboratório está se envolvido com esses dados genômicos e tal, e epidemiológicos. Entendi. Tipo, é, eu tô, sei lá. eu tô me envolvendo mais nessa parte de epidemiologia, assim, tô, tô descobrindo as coisas assim que eu, descobrindo que eu não sei de nada, sabe? mas é, a, o, o Tukushi, ele faz, ele faz é, a parte, né, desse linkage dos dados, Uh, algum, algumas a gente, conversas a gente já teve sobre fazer uma base de dados única para para diversas juntando diversas outras bases de dados né só que isso é realmente bem bem mais complicado do que só linkar né? porque se só linkar você acha esse id de um paciente em todas as outras bancos de dados mas fazer um banco de dados é uma coisa totalmente diferente então, uh por mais que a gente consiga linkar ainda, a gente tem que isso, fazer uma base de dados única é, é bem mais complicado. É tudo trampo, né? É, é... Mas tudo bem, mas eu também falando do trabalho, tá falando de pessoal que a gente pode pegar, né? Porque esse é um artigo que ele é... Ele não descreve um projeto de pesquisa, ele é um artigo que descreve ideias, recomendações, né? É um artigo de perspectivas. E aí, pensando, quais essas perspectivas a gente pode usar no nosso... Tipo, é tudo muito legal, como para entender como é a ciência, né? Mas, sei lá, depois de ler esse artigo, o que você quer mudar no, no, na sua atividade, saca? No que você faz, assim. Ah, sim. Ah, in, então, é justamente, justamente é, pegar algumas dessas é, recomendações e, e ver... E ver... No, no aspecto dos dados epidemiológicos, porque tudo que eu li ali é, foi para dados genômicos e tal, aí eu li sobre é, montagem dos genomas e tudo mais, só que 
se eu transpor isso para dados epidemiológicos, funciona da mesma forma? Assim? Então, é, é mais nesse quesito que eu, que eu, que eu quis apresentar o paper. Uh, até porque não, não tem muito, muitas coisas de análise de, de, de dados com o meu projeto né, na, 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 na minha tese, não tem muitas coisas com análise de dados oriundas de informações de DNA storage. Né? Então, <risos> então, eu estou pegando... Eu sei, a gente tem sempre que transpor algumas coisas para a parte da, da epidemiologia de dados. Até tem um que saiu recentemente é, sobre análise de imagem usando DNA Storage. E aí, só que ele é super longo, eu falei, não vou apresentar isso não. <risos> aí, então, acho que é mais esse transpor coisas que a gente já sabe para genômica, e como o meu projeto envolve isso, e a gente já tem estabelecido muita coisa de genômica, acho que é mais transpor as coisas para a epidemiologia, que acho que funcionam, tem funcionado bem. Assim. Pode crer, maneiro. Mais alguém? É, não, eu só fiquei curioso por que você escolheu esse artigo e como que como essas informações do artigo podem ajudar no seu projeto. Então, em grande parte, por causa disso que eu, que eu acabei de falar, de transpor essas coisas que a gente já sabe de genômica para dados epidemiológicos. Né? Mas você acha que você vai conseguir fazer isso no seu projeto? Não, 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 não dessa forma, com todas as recomendações. Eu... Ah, não, claro. Sim. Não, com, com certeza não. Mas, mas, assim, pensando num futuro, uhum. é, num futuro em que a gente já tenha essas coisas todas estabelecidas, todos esses métodos é, em, em análise de dados usando DNA, eu acho que a gente não, não tem só o que pensar no, no micro ali, a analisar, a analisar alguns dados ali e, e publicar um paper. A gente tem que pensar quando isso for escalável, assim, né? quando o DNA Storage for... for tiver sendo usado para armazenamento em larga escala mesmo. Assim. Como é que a gente vai administrar essas coisas? Aí, aí a gente começar uma coisa e corrigir, melhor começar uma coisa já do, do que a gente tem de melhor. Né? Legal. Eu gostei bastante desse artigo. Eu... É, é bem é, né, é, pontual, assim, é um guia mesmo. Né? Então, é, eu acho que é de revisão. Eu só queria trazer assim, mais para porque eu estava lendo sobre... Ele não tem muitas figuras, eu, tinha que, eu tive que fazer todas as figuras e montar, né? Uma apresentaçãozinha. Uhum. Mas... É, eu recomendo para o próximo você escolher um artigo que, que realmente vai acrescentar alguma coisa no seu projeto, porque né, tanto você vai apresentar o seu projeto logo, né? Então, pensar depois no, no, no outro semestre, né? Quando você for apresentar um artigo que te ajuda realmente diretamente, assim, seja no método, seja na discussão dos resultados, né, algum paper que discute um pouco mais sobre como analisar os dados epidemiológicos, alguma coisa nesse sentido. Mas só, só para ter algo que realmente vai acrescentar diretamente. Tranquilo. Beleza. Mas legal, parabéns, foi, foi muito bom a apresentação, gostei bastante.